another pioneer to the collection. Now, you guys have already seen Jeff Everman, Braden Blevins, some guy named Dave Barnes. But now we get to add our guest here today. Sir, if you would, tell us who you are. Uh, my name is uh, Paul Kaiser. I was a uh, 1992 140-pound state champ. And uh, that's, no, that's I, mean, I, was also, uh, I was also 91 runner-up. Right. Um, now, of course, you guys have seen a lot. Like I said, Simon Kenton, not, Simon Kenton has a great tradition, 1987 team champions. And 1992 as a whole had some great wrestling top to bottom. You had Bobby Van Hoos and Chad Edwards at the 103, Brad Irvin at 112, Mosby at 119, uh, our buddy Tony Condy from Henry Clay. He wrestled Brett Blackmore, uh, Bruce Steph at um, 189 from Sheldon Clark, Eric Dingus and Joey Roby, most outstanding wrestler, uh, Willie Ennels, uh, you. Just some phenomenal wrestling top to bottom. 1992 is a year that get looks over, that gets looked over just for quality top to bottom, good wrestlers in the finals. From from 103 to heavy, just great wrestling. Yeah, some of those guys were went on to do pretty well in college. Mm -hmm. Roby and Ennels wrestled for CCC. So they dropped their team. I remember they dueled them. Uh, Roby got uh, like freshman of the year, I think, at Ohio Northern in his conference. And uh, I know Condi, he all American out there at the in PA. Mm -hmm. Blackmore wrestled at West Liberty. Yeah, those guys, there were some good guys. Yeah, a lot of, lot of good, a lot of good wrestling. So I went to Junior Nationals with Step as a grown man. That guy's a grown man. Oh, yeah. Bruce. <laughs> Bruce Stepp. Yeah, he was yeah, a, he's, he was he's a, a monster, man. He's he was a uh, big hairy man as a high schooler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He he was uh just a different breed of animal, wasn't he, over there from Martin County? Um so no what would that be? You're a senior in 92, so 92, 91, 90, 89. You're in middle school when Simon Kenton wins the team title in 87. I guess you would be still be in middle school when Dave Barnes wins the most outstanding. So in the in your formative years, uh, Simon Kenton is doing a lot of things, team champions and the most outstanding wrestler back to back years. About when do you get into to wrestling? How do you find it? Well, I went to Scott High School. Oh, did you? I went to Scott High School till my junior year. Oh, I, I didn't my know that. Year. And they're they're right next. I mean, our our county schools by each other. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents sold their house and and moved into Simon Kenton, and uh, but uh, I I started wrestling in the seventh grade. I mean, back then that's pretty much what everybody did. You know, we didn't even have junior high wrestling. We just I wrestled high school in seventh okay. grade. Um, I was on the high school soccer team in the seventh grade. I mean, we we that was there wasn't really much. There was junior high football, but that was I think pretty much it. Mm -hmm. um, so I remember. So we had some. Pretty good wrestlers at, at Scott High School. We had uh, we had uh, Tim Vaughn, who's state champ, and uh, 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 Tim Boami. He was one of my partners. He was a he was a grown man. And I was a twelve year old boy. Yeah, as mentioned with Averman, um, he didn't take it easy on me. <laughs> right? No, I, I can imagine. Um, it was, you know, we, so I started, but I did know the Simon Kitten guys. I remember going to those tournaments and watching them. I remember going to the conference. I know it was like the district when it was at Connor and watching in the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. And so I did all the varsity, like I was JV, but I remember like, you know, like Scott Invitational and there being like good guys, you know, like the older guys there watching all them. And, right. And, and, but, you know, like we said, uh, Simon Kenton, man, coming off the, Late eighties, they were rolling. Come into 90, 1992. So you mentioned it earlier. Nineteen ninety one, you're in the finals against Silky out of Trinity. And if I'm not mistaken, he was a two timer, correct? Yes. That that's what I thought. That's what I thought. We um we got put onto the Selkie brothers from our good friend Alex Ray, nineteen ninety state champion from Trinity, hundred and twelve pounds. But nineteen ninety two. What is it? 
he was contacting me about getting the tape and stuff. Okay. Um, like, looks like he's coaching and stuff in stuff like North Carolina or something like that. Or Alex Ray. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere. He like, is. Or I he, remember. He I was. remember him I, let me go back and say that again. He was. Um, I, uh, he he drove in from North Carolina to Louisville when we done his review video there in the Trinity mat room. But let's talk about your 1992 bracket. And something that I found to be kind of uh, – I didn't realize it until I knew it. I just had forgot about it. Um, Livingston Merritt, three-time state champion from Hoptown, was uh, in this bracket in 1992. So he went from 140 to, you know, the heavy in 1997 with with his backflip. That was, that was kind of a cool progression. But you start off the tournament – with a pin over Conrad Garcia from Fort Knox. Doesn't say how long the pin happened, but you win by a pin. I got it right here. I got it right here. I got him in a minute 26. Yeah, I do have the okay. bracket. That's what I was going to say. I believe you've got your bracket there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I just went down in the basement and dug it up. Uh, now, Sometimes me, that's where the best about. things are is in the basement. That kid was pretty, like, he was a pretty, he was from, uh, thought he was from Fort Knox. Yeah. Yeah. Fort Knox. He was on the military. I had another guy, like, the year, I wrestled that guy the year before, too. I think I wrestled him the year before. I think he was in my, like, he was, I was surprised I had him first round, I remember. Yeah. Um, let me see here. I think he's in here. Mm. I wrestled Feldman twice. I wrestled Feldman. Yeah, um, that was in the the quarters. Yeah, that was, wrestling. Okay. Adam Feldman. That Garcia, that Garcia guy was the was the number one. Oh, was he really? Quarter, his my junior year. I knew I saw that, and then he got beat by this Washington guy who was a four, and I'd wrestle mm -hmm. him in semis, and he was tough. Like he put me on my head twice, and I was like, "Oh, really? Oh, man!" And then I end up. I remember his coach yelling at because he was he would put he took he double leg me put in my back in semis, mm -hmm. and I remember like I got up and I was down four zero. I got on my back. I was like, "Whoa, this didn't happen very much. This didn't happen very hardly ever." Right. And since I was like a freshman, and then I like reversed him and then I cradled him and he broke my cradle, which is pretty rare because I got a bear grip, and right. and then he bellied out and then I think finished the period like. Four four or something, and mm -hmm. they end up he didn't score on me after that, being like 13 four. I think that was. And, and like we that. like we said in the 1992. Oh, my bad. No, no, you're fine. In the 1992 quarters, you wrestle uh, Adam Feldman from St. Xavier, and you win that by a tech fall 17 to zero. Yeah, and he ended up getting third. Yeah, he, he was tough. I beat him in the quarters. This year, the the ninety one too. Oh, did you really? I wrestled him. A, I wrestled him a several times in the summer. Yeah, and so this. Let me tell you a little bit. This, I'm not. I'm not super proud of my my matches here. I, I was wrestling really good. Like you can see, I pinned that kid. I tacked Feldman, um, who actually, well, and he's a buddy of mine. Like he, I felt like we were at camps together. We hung out. Hmm. Um, so I was making, I was cutting a lot of weight, like a lot more than what we, like I would probably be a 52 or a 60 pounder if the way they do it now. Right. And um, so, but I was feeling good. Like I was very disciplined. Like I ran, I, I did everything you were supposed to do. Like I, I was very work orientated and I felt like there was nobody. It was kind of my mentality is no one is going to ever outwork. And, um, there was a big push for carbo loading back in the nineties, early nineties, like carbo load, everything's carbs, carb, 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 carb. And they came up with this new drink called carbo. There was a couple of them, but we were just one called ultra fuel and had a hundred grams of carbohydrates in it. My well, goodness. after weigh-ins, I, the second day. So the first day, so they did the quarters on Friday night mm -hmm. and a tech fell in. My brother, my brother and Lee's and a couple of these guys had already been drinking that stuff, but I hadn't drank any yet. 
and they were all kind of falling apart. And I didn't really, we didn't really put two and two together. And then that next morning, uh, we had to make, that was back when we had to make weight the next morning. So yeah. I made weight again in the morning. And they were like, drink this. You know, this is better than just drinking water. And I was like, all right. So I drank it. I was a mess. I tried to wrestle a rusty Calvert in the semis. Right, not to right. jump your thing, but I had Calvert. Calvert beat me the year before. Calvert wrestled for Henry Clay, and he got his what's his coach's name? Garrett. Uh, yeah, uh, Headley. Garrett Headley. Garrett Headley. I, I love that dude. He's a great guy. I've done some okay. camps with him. Wonderful man. But uh, and he's good, he, and he's, they're well coached. Oh and yeah. Calvert did wrestle. Calvert did wrestle in West Virginia for a little bit. W, mm. WVU. Um, but he beat me. I had like three losses my junior year, and one of them was to him at Woodford County Invitational, and. Um, so he, um, I was, I, I, I'm trying not to sound arrogant, but I felt like I knew that the weight class, like all the, they were, you know, I knew there was Willie Annals and there was Roby and Dingus mm -hmm. and there were some good guys, but I felt like personally, not to disrespect any of them, that I was the best one and I was going to win. I was going to pin or tech my way through the tournament and I was going to have my shot go W. Well, I was beating Rusty. Five to nothing, route. I took him down, put him in a cradle, turned him on his back, held him there. Period ends. I get, I choose down. I get a quick escape. I'm up six zero. I cut away. I'm facing him. I start seeing two of him. Oh boy! And then he takes me down, and then he runs a spiral half on me. He's real long. Rusty's real long. He's like I'm a long forward. He was a long. He was like thinner and longer than me. And he ran that spiral half on me. And this is, I, I teach this now a lot in my practices just because I know how much. And him running that on me and he ran it on me and almost never, and, he, and I just was, I was exhausted. I couldn't figure out, as I was in really good shape, I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get up. And I know he's putting, he was putting a lot of pressure on me. He was. Mm -hmm. But that, it was, he was a, it was a tough ride. And he rode me through the, I got hit for stalling a couple of times. We go to the third period. Um, he chooses down. So he's, so I'm still up six, two. Did I choose? Somehow I got, I got, he got four stalling points on me. I think he chose top and I got hit for stalling, got hit for stalling. And then I hit for the two point stalling right at the end of the match. I um, mm. made it six, six. Yep. And then, and then we went to overtime, and he shot in on me. Deep shot, I locked in his crotch. I remember looking at my little brother, Stephen, and he's crying. And I was like, I just didn't know what to do. And I get back, I get back up, and I step on the line, and I grab his arm, and the whistle blows, and I hit an outside fire. I hit an outside fireman. I never hit that ever in my whole life. I don't think I ever hit it since. Outside fireman, I took him down. And then he, you know, he was mad and... Yeah, you know, this is bull. He didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. But I, I think I look at one. Yeah, I won eight six in overtime. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, the bracket that I have from the from the KHSA website says that you win a two zero decision in overtime after it's tied at regulation six six. So I would say that first takedown is what done it for you. And that's a that's a great story uh, about. You know, we've said on the channel, not just me, but other people have said, you know, don't change what got you to the dance. Don't get to the state yes. finals. Don't get yes. there and do something you're not used to doing. So, kids, it may be the, you know, if you've never done it, don't start don't it at the state it. tournament. It's not a good idea to do it the day of. I've made a lot of mistakes, and I've been coaching for 25 years, and I, I use that story as an example all the time. I talk about – as a move against Selkie, he puts a cradle. I pop my arm. I said, "I got, I got pinned one time. I got beat one time my senior year. Not that one. GVWA big tournament up in Dayton. Partnership right. South kid. Same thing. I did the same thing. I, I reached to grab the head. I was winning. Post. I reached to grab the head. Rolls me through. My arms stuck. I, I get pinned. Same mm -hmm. thing happened to Selkie. Now, Selkie was really good at just winning a match four to one. Yeah. He was real good at scoring his points. And that guy was really strong. Like, I've never really wrestled a guy. Like, usually I'm the strongest. That guy was a very physically strong guy. 
Um, but, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so the whole day, so that was in the morning. I crawled off the mat, and somebody handed me Gatorade, and I threw up everywhere. Like, I've never thrown up before, like, from physical exhaustion. That's the only time. So yeah. I, I talked to a doctor afterwards. He was telling us, telling me that what happened was was that my body was was already depleted because of cutting weight, and it just took all the water. So I dehydrated. It dehydrated, and it took all the water and like from my muscles and put it in my stomach to process it. So the whole day, I remember laying around at the hotel, you know, at Atherton, and where we had down there in Louisville, where we were at. I remember just laying around in the hotel all day, just drinking water, drinking water, just feeling exhausted like yeah just a mess so my finals match i was super worried about falling apart and i never really seen i never really seen step uh clearly it's good wrestling it went up three you know, went up three i think he won every year after that mm -hmm. um but uh yeah you know, uh, I, I was gonna say you you make it to the finals and you wrestle archie step from Sheldon clark and Archie, of course, was in the 92 finals. He wins it in 93, and he makes it back to the finals in 94, and he wrestles Tendai Cherisika from St. Xavier, and that video is on the channel. Tendai wins it, but – okay, oh, so you lost him, Cherisika. I remember, I, I remember that, dude. He yeah. would come to summer tournaments. He was a, he was yeah, a Tendai was tough, man. Tendai is a heck of a heck of a wrestler. Tendai is – He uh, wrestled my buddy Jay a lot. But he yeah. was younger. He was like seventh. He was like eighth grade. And I remember him being like eighth or ninth grader and coming to tournaments when you're all older and wrestling. Yeah, Tendai yeah, ten was, ten was, was uh, an, an, an animal. Still is. That when it, when we were doing his review videos in person, I was like, Tendai, buddy, you could, you could win it today. You're 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 probably more muscular now than what you was in high school. So, but I saw him when he was like I think an eighth grader and he was jacked. I was like, yeah, he, he's a he's a monster. I mean, he's he's a he's a big dude. Um, so you're do do you go back to your hotel there in Louisville and just drink water until it's time to leave? I mean, until it's time to get up and go. I remember laying around. I remember sitting at the pool, just like on them lounge chairs, drinking water. I remember like just like there was wrestling stuff going. On. I remember not going back, just being like, yeah. I'm just gonna cheer and and just try to hydrate and try to hydrate. And I just didn't feel good. I didn't feel right all day. And mm. um so when I get to the so I get to the match, I'm just like super worried I'm gonna lose it. Because usually I go out, I'm like ball fire trying to like just crunch everybody up fast right. and cradle them, let them up, cradle them, roll them back over, cradle them, roll. You know, I would just do that over and over and and uh I beat a lot of really good dudes like that. And I so my I feel like my match is really boring because I I score my points. And then I just take it easy. <laughs> and hey. then at the end, I went five to one. And then he, at the end, my coach, my coach told me he wanted to me to jump in his arms. He never had anybody do that. So I, I cut him and kind of danced around. And then I kind of did a half jump. And then yeah, my, my heavyweight's like, I want you to jump into the crowd. So I was kind of like doing it, but it was like, I don't know. It was kind of like just kind of relief. Yeah, no, because. I understand. And the the 92 video that we have, we want to say thank you to Brent and Harrison Courtney from Woodford County for finding it for us. We we were able to dig through some tapes at Woodford County High School and find it. The 92 tape that we have, it has the face-off and the match. But the, uh, the match, I'm not sure who filmed it. This is the original. Like I had it, The um, there's a lot of, uh, like, if you guys go out of bounds in between periods, that's cut. So I guess they were trying to save film, trying to save battery, but we're going to pull it up here. We're at Atherton. So let's go, man. That's Bruce right there clapping in the uh, same type of outfit. There you come out. Yeah, Sheldon Clark. There was Sheldon Clark. Yep. And it picks up right off the whistle, like he's got you right, like in a front headlock there. He got shot and he sprawled on me. I'm just trying to suck or drag or dump him. And um, so from from neutral, you 
uh, on the mat, you said you were a cradle guy, but from neutral, what's our uh, go-to takedown? Well, I don't remember. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I don't think I had a go-to. I just think I uh, just keep doubles or singles, whatever was available. I was pretty good at throwing, but I tried to stay away from that a lot in high yeah. school. I was good at that in freestyle and Greco and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's something that you rarely see anymore is anybody doing throws. That's more – you just hardly ever see it. So right there, you're trying for like a front headlock, keeping pressure on him. Yeah, he was, he was, I was, he was sucker dragging me here. Yeah. To be honest, I haven't watched this in a long time. I don't... All right, still, mate, we go back to neutral. I, I think that I just, I was like, just trying to make, you know, feel it out because I was so worried about, like, feeling the way I felt in the semi match. I don't uh, think I got to take down. I think I, um, I think I, uh, I reversed him. I was also really good off the bottom. All right, we're out of bounds. Um, so that's the end of the first period. I believe he takes down. So it, it looks like you've got that arm over his head and you're working – to that leg, looks like you're trying for a cradle there, but he's able to get long and kind of stuff that attempt. So what I do is I put my boot in and I do a draping cradle. I'm kind of working the splits there, but I'm setting up my cradle. I want my cradle. Yeah. And the way I, I use my, I would use my boot to like as an anchor, so I can mm -hmm. do a, 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 a far side cradle and not fall off. Right. That's smart. That's that's a that's a smart way. And it looks like right there you're trying for like a banana split or something, but the riff called a stalemate. Yeah, see, there's my there's another. There. there it is. You've got the head, and you're under his knee, just waiting for him to sit back. There it is. One, two. And there's Coach Matney standing up. Rest in peace to Coach Matney. So, you can hear the crowd yelling for you. Yeah, we had a pretty good, pretty good crowd. Simon Kitten brought a lot of people. I oh, yeah. They love the wrestling. Yep. Camera needs to pan over a little bit to the right. So, and it, it does here just in a second. There we go. Oh. So, like I said, once I scored my points, I didn't try to do a whole lot. I was just trying to get through the match. All right, we're out of bounds. So, you got – I believe the ref held up the wrong hand, but I believe you got two near fall there. I got three. Three? Okay. In the period. Sure. So, yeah, I think I was down. I'm trying working for an escape here. Well, I thought I got a reversal. Maybe he doesn't give me the escape here. It looks like he still got me in a front headlock. Yep, I've so never he, really he broken still, contact. He still got it. Watch the knee, watch the knee. Nice job avoiding that trip right there. So you get your one. Oh, get escape. We're neutral. So I must have been two. I must. I must have gotten two near fall. That's. That's what I was. When I was cutting it down, I was watching. I believe he only gave you two. Uh, so you're right back though, to a. Uh, of course, he has that leg. Quarter. You're trying to push the head away. Get I got a front quarter Nelson. Yep. My elbow's way too deep. 
My technique was not good on the front headlock. My elbow was way too deep. Nope, not yet, not yet. There it is. So you get get a takedown. I think I'm bulldogging the leg, looking for a near rift. So now I'm up, I think it's five, five nothing. Yeah. I think it's five, a few seconds left. I believe left. it's five zero. You cut him. That makes it five one. He needs a big there's move. Not, there's like, there's only a that's few seconds. That's it. That's the end of the. I knew there was like a letting go with like eight or nine seconds left. There wasn't much left. So great performance. So it was a pretty. Yeah, I felt like it was not a good performance. <laughs> it, it, was, it was good enough to win. And, you know, sometimes it doesn't have to be pretty or your best performance. It just has to be better than um, – that's something in doing this series. You know, we talked to guys and, and uh, we're, you know, watched their videos back up there all this time. And they're, uh, they'll watch it and be like, man, I really didn't wrestle good right there. I, I know I could have done better. But at the time, it was good enough to win. And that's really – that's kind of what matters. Yeah, I just – I was – I was like – it was kind of like disappointing to not be able to perform the way – I performed really with, well on Friday. I just mm -hmm. felt like on Saturday, I just – because what that beverage I drank and – Yeah. I fell apart and – yeah. I, and the thing is that I had – you know, we had – ended up having five state champions on our team, but I was the only one that won state that day. Yeah, on and, our team, and, yeah. and, and Tommy was returning two time. Uh, and the Tommy Storms, right? Hard. You yeah. had what? You had Tommy Storms. I believe you had uh, the the Lee brothers, right? Mm -hmm. My brother. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so you you and know had, a, lot, then, a lot of great wrestling on that on that squad there. So uh, we had Rump. Rump. And Rump got third. I mm -hmm. I came back. Coach, those guys are all fresh, but I coached them. They're oh, did you? Here. Their senior year, and we 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 uh, wrestled Sheldon Clark in the for, in the state dual finals. But we had, the, we had we had the lead, the lead. I had the two Lee brothers, and then uh, uh, Richardson, Chris Richardson, yeah. Redmond. We had some good dudes. I think we were uh, getting third in the school that year. I, I that's that's pretty good. Now earlier you talked about uh, wrestling in college. Where did you go on to college to wrestle? I wrestled for. Uh, Two two years at Liberty University, two and a half years, and then I wrestled at Ohio University my last two years. They dropped the program at Liberty. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, me and Dave Barnes used to train together in the summer. We'd break into Simon Kenton. We'd crawl through a window and and roll the mats out. And uh, but uh, yeah, so I got, I got I was fortunate enough to go and and uh, become a much better wrestler and wrestle with some right. really good guys. And my wrestling partner, my wrestling partner at OU was an NCAA champion. Now, Ohio, uh, that's in Athens, correct? Yeah, I, I'm the head coach at Athens High School. I have been for 18 years. That's that's what I thought. That's what I – they were um, – whenever we done Jeff Everman's video and uh, Braden Blivens there at, at the La Rosa's, I believe they said you were uh, you were up, up that way, but I'm glad that, you know, we were – with the with the Zoom technology, I'm glad we were able to to make this happen. So – Yeah, it's, just, it's hard for me to get in. I coach – I'm also – Football. I'm an assistant of our uh, high school football coach as well, and my son's a, on the team. And I got you. Um, so uh, you you being a high school head coach, former state champion, former collegiate wrestler, talk to the uh, the current high schoolers, the kids that are thinking about coming out for wrestling. What would you tell them coming in to the wrestling season? Well, like never wrestling before or just? Just maybe kids that are watching this and they're saying, I'm on the fence about wrestling. All my buddies are doing it. I'm just not sure. Should I do this? Should I not do it? Just kind of give That's them a the little thing. bit of a, of a pep yeah, like, talk. Like, like Jeff Everman said, I got cut from basketball. Best thing ever happened to me. <laughs> I don't know. That's, and, that's... Uh, and so, I mean – Wrestling's gonna like make you. It's going to try. It, it can make the best version of you. 
uh, because it takes – there's no – like you can play – like football or basketball. These other sports, a lot of – I mean, don't get me wrong. You get a hard work for those too. But you can also kind of play a little bit and hide out. Wrestling, there's no hide. It's like your work will show. If you're mm-hmm. taking off, if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, you might it might you might get away with it a couple of times, but it's 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 going to show. Mm-hmm. And I, I believe that if you really want to test yourself and you want to you want full participation, testing about like if you you can join a basketball team or football team and hardly ever get a snap or hardly ever get to play or play baseball and you ride the bench. I mean, there's only so many guys that play wrestling. Even if you're the JV in this day and age, you get in. We'll throw you in a tournament. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I've had, I've had the guys like on my team that are like the third screen backup tried out on the tournament, and they wrestled the number five ranked guy in the country. That they're three time returning state champ. Yeah. Hey, this is how it draws out. I mean, but it's also going to like if you just keep plugging at it and learn how to learn how to deal with adversity. You can deal with that. If you can join wrestling and deal with adversity, you can deal with a lot of stuff in life. And I hear so much stuff in life right now that's, you know, that people are like, you know, I, uh, I can't do this or I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I, I don't want to diminish with anybody, you know, but there's just, you know, there's so much quit. And in wrestling, if you can, I, I, I give this speech every year at my, at my team, but if you can just make it through a wrestling season, you've accomplished something. You don't even got to be a state champion. You ain't got to be a state whatever. If you can just make it through a season, show up every day, give it everything you've got, you've accomplished something because it's a grind. It's hard. But it's like satisfying. It's like you're a badge of honor. You can say, I'm part of this club. You know, a lot of people can't say, you know, like, oh, I try, you know, hear a lot of that. I tried wrestling, but this and that. But you you do it and then you do it. And then all of a sudden it's like, man, I, I did that. I accomplished yeah. that. That was was not easy. I grinded every day. We have guys come in, like OU students who come in and do like little present stories and then don't really know anything about it. And they'll watch our practice, like video our practice. And they'll be like, I remember one being like, we warmed up. And he was like, that was the warm up. Yeah. Uh, that is so hard. What? That is so hard. I'm like, yeah, it's like what we do is, is not easy, but mm-hmm. you can do it. You can say you did something and you're part of something that was, that was special. Absolutely. And I, I truly believe that. no, that's, that's a, I think that's a great place to end the video, Paul, man. Thank you for doing this. Really appreciate it. Um, I know the Simon Kenton crowd, I'm sure a lot of your wrestlers will go back and watch this and say, come on, coach. Uh, what was yeah, you doing here? Or, but, you know, if I've done that type of shot, I'd get 10 that. extra push-ups. Or if I, if I shot from that far out, you'd make me, run two miles around the school building, you know, whatever. But, man, it's cool that we were able to have the video and you were able to join us. I really appreciate it. But, guys, that's all that we have. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you on the mats.